Hello friends, welcome. I'm your friend, your host Roy. You know we are talking about series 1 where we are exploring real numbers. Friends, today is episode number 16 and today's topic is proving irrational numbers using the new theorem that we saw in the last video. So what was the theorem that we saw in the last video? So the theorem went like this. So say p is a prime number. Then if, if p divides a square where a is any positive number, then p must also divide a. So in short, what it means is that if if a is any positive number, so let us just say 1, 2, 5, 4. We just randomly picked a number, positive number. And if we square it, and if we say that p is a prime number such that we know that this number is divisible by p, that is, there is the remainder is 0. If that is true, then it will mean that 1, 2, 5, 4 is also divisible by p. And friends, this is what we saw in the last video and we actually went through the whole proof of why this is absolutely true. So today we are going to use this theorem and we are going to prove that y square root 2 is irrational, y square root 5 is irrational, y square root 11 is an irrational number. Now very quickly friends, uh, just to have a recap on rational irrational numbers, we have seen them in great detail in class 9, in our earlier class in section 1. I'm going to include the links for those videos down below. So essentially, what we know is that if, uh, if any number can be expressed in the form of p by q, where p and q are both integers and q, the denominator, is not equal to 0, we call these numbers rational numbers these numbers are called rational numbers and any number that we cannot express in this form they are irrational numbers right so examples of rational numbers will be 2 by 3 i'm just randomly putting in some you know integers both on the numerator denominator even this is a rational number because i can this write 9 as 9 by 1 so on so forth so any number that i cannot express in this form are irrational numbers and we have seen in the last uh, class in detail the proof of why these numbers cannot be expressed in this form. But in this particular video, we are going to use this theorem, theorem that we learned in the last video, to prove that each of these numbers are irrational numbers. So let's get on with it. Now, let us see how we can prove square root 2 is a irrational number. Now, friends, if you have a younger brother or sister, you know that sometimes, you know, whenever you tell them to do something, they exactly do the opposite, right? So they never listen and they do exactly the opposite of what you want. If you want them to say, hey, do this, they will actually not do that. Or if you tell them not to do this, they will exactly do that. So we will kind of do something similar here. The question says prove square root 2 is an irrational number. We will say, you know what, let us assume that square root 2 actually is a rational number. We will start with this assumption that square root 2 is a rational number. Now, if square root 2 is a rational number, then square root 2 must be, you know, uh, can be expressed in the form p by q, where both pq integers q not equal to 0. Now, also, let us assume that p and q may have a common factor, and let us divide both the numerator and denominator by that common factor, then we will get something like a by b, where both a and b are co-prime. So, co-prime means nothing but the fact that there are no common factor except one between a and b. So what is really the difference between p by q and a by b? So think about it this way. If p by q is let's say of the form 2 by 3. Now in this case there are no common factors, right? So you are good. So we will just assume the square root 2 equals to something like this. But what if if your p by q is something in this fashion as say 15 by 25? Here, 15 can be expressed as 5 times 3 and 25 can be written as 5 times 5, right? So, all we are trying to do is just to remove the common factor so that we end up with 3 by 5, which is that there are no common factor between the numerator and denominator. So, A and B are co-prime. A and B are co-prime. There are no common factor between A and B. All right, so let's let's continue with our proof. So I have got square root 2 equal to a by b. So what we will do is let's square both the sides. So if you square both the sides, you will get 
2 square root 2 times square root 2 is 2, 2 equal to a square divided by b square. We are going to take the b square over here and we are going to bring the 2 down below. So, we will get b square is equal to a square divided by 2. Now, friends, our theorem that we saw in the last video stated that if a is any positive integer and a square divided by 2, if, if 2 divides into a square, 2 is a prime, it means, it means that 2 should also divide a or a is divisible by 2, which means that 2 is a factor of a or we can write a as 2 times c, where c is any integer, does not matter. The important thing is that 2 is a prime factor of a because 2 divides into a. This comes from our last theorem, right? So, now in this equation, let us do one thing. Let us do it here. So, in this equation, what we are going to do, we are going to replace a by 2c and again c is some integer. The point is a can be written as the prime factor 2 multiplied by some integer. So, we have b square which is equal to a square. So, instead of a, we are going to write this square divided by 2 and this will be if you take out the bracket, you will have 2 square which is 4 c square divided by 2 and you can cancel this out. So, 2 2 is a 4. So, you will have b square equal to c square divided by 2. Now, we again get this 2 over here, right? And if you actually, the 2 is in the numerator, it is not like this. So, we, you have a 2 over here. So, we will bring the 2 down here. So, we will have c square equal to b square divided by 2. So, so what do we have here? So, again notice that we have b square, b is a positive integer and b square divided by 2. So, again by the same theorem, if b square is divided by 2, it means that b must be also divisible by 2 or it means that b has 2 as one of its factors. So, we can express b as 2 times d where c, d is some integer. The important point is b has 2 as one of its factor. If you look at these two situation, I have a equals 2 times some integer and I have b equals 2 times some other integer d. Both a and b, they have a common factor which is 2. But this basically contradicts the very fundamental assumption that a and b are co-prime. That, are, that is, there are no common factor between A and B. So, we cannot have 2 as a common factor between A and B because by definition A and B are co-prime. Now, this contradiction arises because we made an inaccurate assumption that square root 2 is a rational number. Hence, our assumption is wrong. Hence, square root 2 is not a rational number or square root 2 is an irrational number. Now, friends, I know that this is a lot actually, a lot is going on just to prove square root 2 is an irrational number. But if you get this kind of a question in your exam, in your test, this is how you have to actually answer this. So, now let us just take a look at, you know, step by step, how do we write it? You know, should we have to, uh, you know, in a, in a order how we have to write it in a test. So, we will again start with the fact that, you know, let us assume that square root 2 is a rational number and we can express that in the form of p by q. So, we have square root 2 equals to p by q. Then, we say that let us assume they have a common factor and then we want to divide them by the common factor so that we get square root 2 equals a by b where both a and b are co-prime numbers. That is, they have no common factor except 1. Squaring both sides, you get b square equal to a square by 2 and then that means from the theorem that if a square is divisible by 2, then a will be divisible by 2 or 2 is a factor for a, which means we can express a as 2 times c where c is some integer, right? Now, what are we going to do? We are going to now replace a by 2c 
and then you will get c square equal to b square by 2. So exactly the same as we saw and again from the same theorem we will note that 2 must be a factor for b right and what does it mean? So it means that both a and b have a common factor 2 but but we know that a and b have no common factor except 1. Why? Because they are co-prime. Because they are co-prime. So, a and b cannot have any common factor and here we are as 2 being a common factor for a and b. So, our initial assumption square root 2, our initial assumption that square root 2 is a rational number is wrong. Hence, square root 2 must be an irrational number. Now friends, so this is exactly how you have to do these things. So I'm going to probably, you know, show you how, for example, if you have square root 11 is a rational number, I'm not going to explain you in detail, uh, you know, step by step how to write it because we just saw that for square root 2. If you have something like this, any other number square root 11, you will approach it exactly the same way. You will say, let us assume this is a rational number and then you will say, I can express this in the form of p by q, you know, where p, q are integers, q not equal to 0 and uh, let us assume if they have, you know, one common uh, factor, we will take, we will divide it and remove that, then you will get, you know, square root 11 equals to a by b, then you want to square both sides and you will get 11 equals to a square by b square, exactly the same and then you will have b square equal to a square by 11. From our theorem, we know that if 11 divides into a square, that means 11 must divide into a or that means that 11 is a factor in a or we can express a as 11 times some other integer c. You can write any integer. The point is that 11 is a factor. So, if this is the case, then we will replace 11 c in terms of a in this equation, right? So, we will basically get b square equal to 11 times c square. This is the a square divided by a square divided by 11 or we have basically 11 square c square divided by 11. So, 1 11 will strike out. So, you will have c square equal to b square divided by 11. So, exactly the same way if b square is divided by 11, that means that b must be divisible by 11, which means that 11 is a factor of b. I must be able to express b as 11 times some integer d and then we note between a and b, 11 is a common factor. But we know that a and b are actually co-prime numbers, so they do not have any factor, common factor except 1 and here we are between a and b 11 is a common factor which cannot be the case. So our assumption that square root 11 is a rational number is actually wrong. So friends, in the next uh, video, we are going to take a look at how we can extend the theorem to prove some more irrational numbers.